Vileplume is back with the Indigo Disc DLC, and while this thing is normally used in a defensive way, I found a way to make the Smelly Flower go crazy offensively. Now, Vileplume does only have base 80 attack and 50 speed. However, it does have the ability Chlorophyll, which is able to double our speed stat in the sun. Vileplume normally being a special attacker, we can catch opponents off guard with Swords Dance to also double our attack stat. Sharp Flower. We pair this with a move Solar Blade, which is a 125 power grass move that doesn't have to charge in the sun, and we can do some unexpected damage. Combo that with Strength Sap, which drops the opponent's attack stat and heals us up for longevity, plus Terra Fire to catch Steel types, and this little dude can really get going. So look, I've always been a big Vileplume enjoyer, however, it's always just been pretty defensive and passive, except today we have an absolute death flower that nobody is going to expect. If you're into that kind of thing, consider hitting that subscribe button, it's free, it only takes you a second, I promise you will not regret it, and let's go ahead and jump into the match. So today we have a match that I got from my Discord server, if you want to join the community, the link is in the description, however, they decide to lead off with the washing machine and I toss out the Torkoal. I want to get the sun up in our Minecraft diamond house as quick as possible because we've got some, some chlorophyll shenanigans to work with here. So, right off the bat, I decide to go for the Stealth Rock. Now, the first thing I notice is that Torkoal literally just went first somehow, but he has his eyes closed, and even Torkoal can see that there's something weird going on here. They go for the Volt Switch, and what that interaction tells me is that this Rotom actually has the Lagging Tail item. That's the only way it's slower than Torkoal here, and it actually, it's an interesting strategy because now it means that thing can trick that to a Pokemon later. It also means that they get a slow Volt Switch, which generally is good for a turn one matchup. And this decides to bring in the Gliscor. Now, I figured this thing probably just sets up the Stealth Rock here, and I do kind of have a good answer in old Scuba Steve over here. I bring in the Primarina, looking manly as hell once again, and they do just go for that Stealth Rock. So, I'm of course in a pretty good spot in terms of a matchup here. I figure Gliscor doesn't really have much business staying in here. Uh, worried about taking an Ice Beam to the face, so I figure it's probably time to just start setting up a Calm Mind or two. Call this shit the Meditation Zone because this Primarina is about to be calm as hell. However, they actually just stay in here and go for the spikes. This Gliscor is here uh, to lay down as many Legos as possible and make my switches uh, basically punish. So I get up the Calm Mind, and seeing as this thing is faster, I figure they probably, their best damage is going to be something like an Earthquake or they switch out here. So. I'm gonna go for the Draining Kiss, just to get some health back. They actually do just go for the knockoff here. It does get rid of my Throat Spray, which is not that big of a deal. Um, but I do go for the gra Draining Kiss. Just plant a nice little smooch on him, and it doesn't really do a whole lot of damage. It's gonna be more of like a defensive Gliscor build. But at this point, I'm like, okay, surely they've shown me that they wanna stay in here. I'm just gonna click the Ice Beam to play it safe. I am sitting at full HP, so this is totally fine. And they do stay in once again to get up another layer of spike. So my, my switches are definitely going to start to start to hurt a little bit here as there's two layers of spikes. They got the Stealth Rock. Luckily though, the Ice Beam is going to take care of the Gliscor and down goes a pretty you know, annoying defensive threat. So now they're going to switch into whatever they want and they decide to go back into the slow ass washing machine. This is the kind of guy who's going to come and just steal your quarters, essentially. So um, I am just going to go for the Draining Kiss. I can get some pretty decent damage at plus one. I plant one on him and it's still not really stacking up that much. But then they do go for that trick, and we finally do get to see the reveal of the fact that uh, this was a Lagging Tail Rotom Wash. So I take the Lagging Tail now, and my tail is just out here running at two frames per second, just like Scarlet and Violet. So, uh, of course, now I am slower. They decide to go for the will Wisp just for some continuous chip here on the Primarina, as I'm set up and actually in a pretty decent position against their team. Uh, but I can go for another Draining Kiss and just grab some more health back. They likely don't Thunderbolt there because at plus one special defense, I'm relatively bulky and I get a lot of health back from that Draining Kiss. So at least the burn is gonna guarantee some damage here. And now they can just uh, go for that Volt Switch, save the Rotom for later. And I'll tell you what, one thing is for sure, their team does not look great against the Primarina setup here. So they actually decide to bring in the Iron Valiant. Now, the Chrome Gardevoir Gallade combo is gonna come in and pop the Booster Energy, which is uh, gonna end up being the quark drive for speed. So this thing is extremely fast. However, at plus one special attack, a draining kiss, depending on the build here, is gonna grab the knockout and down goes a super big threat. They probably banked on the fact uh, that they maybe had some investment to be able to live that and then fire off a strong physical attack in return. However, Primarina is just out here rolling and down goes one of the biggest threats for me, which is great. Also, I'm still sitting at full HP and Primarina is, uh, is balling. So, now they get a switch into whatever they like and they decide to go into the Scrafty. So, 
Scrafty is looking absolutely hideous with its shiny colors, but it's also looking a little bit scary here. Now, of course, I do have the four times super effective draining kiss, but surely they're gonna bust out a Terra here. So what I decide to do is actually click the psychic noise. Instead, they go for the fake out, they don't Terra on that turn, which is good to know. However, my best option here is to predict them to go for the Terra Poison. I've been working with the Terra Poison Scrafty, I've been seeing it kind of running around lately, and I don't benefit a lot from making the obvious play. So I'm gonna click the Psychic Noise, and luckily they do actually Terra into what we expect. They're gonna put the huge skull on its head. Scrafty is looking honestly pretty badass and like he wants to sell me some drugs in the back alley. Uh, with the Terra Poison, the uh, Poison Jab is gonna be boosted enough to do a bunch of damage, but luckily, Primarina is barely able to live. I can fire off the Psychic Noise, and while it's not gonna do a lot of damage, it's definitely gonna be much better uh, than the Draining Kiss there. So I get some super effective chip. I bring this thing, you know, around close to half. I really just need some damage off on this thing. Its defensives make it pretty annoying, and at least this ensures that it wasn't gonna stay in in Dragon Dance. As now they do finish me off with the Poison Jab, down goes the Primarina, and we were looking great. We were able to punch some holes in the team, and now we are in a spot to where I'm really feeling like Vileplume can get going if I can get it to get set up correctly. So, step one of the plan is to bring in the Torkoal. It is looking about dim as shit in here, and Torkoal is ready to, to make that difference. So, I can bring this thing in, set up that Drought. Of course, we do get hit by that Stealth Rock and the Spikes, but here's the thing. I actually... I don't really want this Torkoal to stick around for too long. I am going to go for the Lava Plume to get some chip here, potentially uh, get a burn, as they do Drain Punch, and this Torkoal is way too damn defensive. Have you seen the thickness of this cloud? We were just eating that Drain Punch up. I then fire off the Lava Plume, and it pretty much, you know, does nothing. This Scrafty is out here defensive as titties, and I do not get the burn either, which is a bit unfortunate, but they do have to finish me off with the Poison Jab here, and here's why that's good. It does maximize the amount of turns, that I'm going to be able to use uh, for Sun. So the Vile Plume is now basically in full form. I'm going to bring this thing in, and generally whenever people see Vile Plume, you're looking at it thinking, okay, it's Sleep Powder, it's going to be able to Strength Sap, Giga Drain, Sludge Bomb. Overall, don't have a great matchup against the Scrafty here. However, I am in fact full offensive flower. I'm going to go for that Swords Dance with the Chlorophyll. I am going to be faster. I'm actually, I believe, naturally faster than this thing anyway. I'm running max speed with the Jolly Nature. They decide to go for the knockoff there, and I am able to take at least one of them, which now is going to bring me to a spot where I have a decision to make. I decide to go for the Strength Sap rather than the damage. Now, the problem is, in the back they have the King Gambit, who with the Sucker Punch is going to be able to chip me from that range, but with the Strength Sap, I can not only drop their attack one stage, but also drain them, pause, and get myself back to full HP, and now I take attacks from this thing like no problem. So. I do want to try to make use of the sun turns that I have, and I feel like I have just enough to try to pull this thing off. So, I'm actually going to end up going for the Terra Fire, and lighting this thing on fire is going to put me in a spot where now Terra Blast has great coverage and good damage, especially in the sun. So, they actually decide to switch into the Rotom Wash once again, who is feeling light, feeling much faster than when it had that lagging tail, but it's not going to be faster than the Vile Plume, or be able to really switch into anything this thing wants to throw at it, because it came in, and with the Stealth Rocket live with like 1 HP, so I fire off the Terra Blast just to flex on him, and Vile Plume grabs the first kill of the game here. So, uh, down goes the Rotom, that's a great Pokemon to see gone, and now with the Swords Dance under our belt, Vile Plume is looking extremely threatening, so we get to see kind of what their answer is going to be. So, they decide to go into the Hisuian Arcanine, take some Stealth Rock Chip, and it's actually looking like a Solar Blade in the Sun with that Sword Stance should potentially be enough to knock out the Doggo since it is going to be a neutral hit. So, I do outspeed, which is important to note because it's not Choice Scarf. I bust out the fucking Lightsaber and absolutely slice this dog in half, and the element of surprise is really is really on our side here because Vileplume both outspeeding and one-hit KO in the Arcanine is not something you see every day. So. Now they go into the King Gambit, and of course I am afraid of the Sucker Punch, but at the health that I'm at, I'm feeling comfortable that I can take a hit, and we are surprisingly just barely able to hang on, which then allows us to fire off the Fire Terror Blast, and we can absolutely melt this dude back to the Shadow Realm where it belongs. So that was extremely clutch, uh, the Strength Sap allowing me to, to take that hit, and now their final Pokemon is going to be the Scrafty. So this thing comes in, takes a little bit of that Stealth Rock chip, and we do know that it is carrying the Fake Out. So the bad news is it might be able to finish me off. They do go for the fake out here. I live it with 5 HP, which is amazing. Now, the bad news about that is 
the sunlight does fade, I lose my chlorophyll, but since I'm actually jolly in max speed, Fileplume is able to naturally outspeed. We get our crazy little stump legs going, and a Terra Blast is gonna finish off uh, the Scrafty there. So that was honestly kind of the craziest circumstances for the Vileplume to pop off here, and the element of surprise comes in clutch once again. Vileplume, definitely not the Pokemon you see as a sweeper, but on this Sun Team, especially with the access to the Terra Fire to cover for Steel types and things like that, it truly, it, it can catch people off guard and win some games. So if you guys enjoyed, make sure to leave a like on the video. Truly, I, I do appreciate all the support and all the comments. And I'll catch you guys next time. Peace out.